the body of Christ and how, uh, because we are the body of Christ, every believer is, is connected. Uh, but then we saw that there's also the local church you know, of, uh, in the natural. Um, geographically, God has ass assigned local churches and believers should also be part of the local church and we mustn't say that i'm part of the global body of christ and therefore you know i i uh, really don't need to be a part of the local body and uh, we looked at what the body parts uh, uh, you know, how the body parts work together uh, and how uh, every part is important and every part needs to do it, make its contribution. And in the same way in the local church, every believer is important. Every believer uh, is, is called to serve and contribute in some way. Uh, and, uh, you know, God, uh, God has put all of us together and we must move in a united way. And we must also remember that Christ is the head. So, you know, we looked at some of these aspects in the last class. And today we will move on to the next topic here, which is about the church being the family of God. Okay, uh, And uh, it is indeed uh, a very beautiful uh, thought, a place where God has called us to belong. Uh, and uh, for many of us, you know, we are able to relate to this, the church being the family of God, where we've met uh, uh, wonderful people who care for us, who've nurtured us, and you know, we are able to serve and minister to others. So the church is really meant to be like a family. Uh, but from God's word, we'll see what kind of a family God expects uh, a church to be. And we will talk about the church being a family more in terms of the local church, because that's where we can live out our lives. That's where we can connect with others and have our relationships. So uh, it'll be more in, in the context of the local church. Uh, here, the house of God, okay, household of God. Now, these terms have been used in the word of God. And that is why you know we, we can also mention it and talk about a house, uh, the church as a house or a church as a family. So there are some scriptures in the notes. Uh, I'm on page 55, chapter 9, the local church, the family of God. So right on top, there are a couple of uh, scriptures given where uh, the church is called as the household of faith. Uh, it's called as, uh, uh, you know, a place where saints and members of the household of God dwell together. Uh, and when Paul wrote to Timothy, he told him, you must, you need to know how to conduct yourself in the house of God. So even he uses this term house of God. So it's like a family. And first Peter 2, 5, where uh, we are told that we are the living stones and God is building a spiritual house. Okay, So uh, we understand that this is some this is a work that God is doing and he is building a house for those who belong to him. And this house okay, simply refers to uh, a dwelling or, or, or a place where people live. Uh, in the Greek, it comes from the term oikos, uh, and that's what it means. So a place where we live, now that's just a moment. Uh, yes, Avni, you Ma'am, uh, some... Brother Charles is uh, messaging that he wants to get in, but he's not able to. Is, uh, so just oh. wanted to inform you, ma'am. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, but I don't, I can't see him trying attempting to enter the class so i can only help if uh, okay ma'am okay yes could you could you please tell him that uh, yes yeah. i told him to exit and enter again but it's mm -hmm. been like 10 minutes and uh, maybe i'll inform you in case oh. there is some way you could let him sure yeah. sure uh, uh, and also you could just check with him I is he connecting to the local church class or okay. by mistake he could be sure. trying to get into the kingdom okay. builders yeah, class thank you yeah could please check thank you Avni. thank you for uh, notifying of that okay so we were saying that um, it's a dwelling place where uh, a family lives together uh, and we as god's people no, the scriptures call us sons and daughters, children of God. We are called as the children of God. So we belong to the house of God. Okay. And every um, house 
uh, has a, uh, a an appointed authority or a person who leads that house uh, in the scriptures there's a term called householder okay, householder is uh, nothing but the head of the house uh, so when we consider the house of god you know who is the head of the house who is the head of the house there's a passage in the book of hebrews hebrews 3 verses 5 uh, through 6 i think it's good to read it it'll it'll help us understand better it's in our notes page 55 uh, could somebody please read that passage from hebrews hebrews 3 5 to 6 anyone please Shall I okay, either either of you, anyone. Yeah, yeah. Rupa ma'am, you can go on. Okay. Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant to testify to the things that were to be spoken later. But Christ is faithful over God's house as a son and we are his house if indeed we hold fast our confidence and our boasting in our hope. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Rupa. So uh, in this passage, we are told that Moses was a leader appointed by God and he took care of God's family. Now, under the old covenant, he led the people of God and he was a faithful uh, person unto God. But he is described as a servant. Moses was faithful in all his house as a servant. Okay, so he did the work that called God called him to do. In comparison to Moses, we are told Christ is also faithful over his house. So his house is uh, all of us, the believers, the children of God. Christ is faithful over the house of God. But what is the difference? Moses led as a servant. But Christ is the son over the house. Okay, Whose house we are. So knowing that the Lord Jesus is the son over the house, we must give the main person of the house the glory which is due to him. So in any given house, whoever is uh, who, who whoever has the inheritance. So if you have a servant and if you have a son, you know the house obviously belongs to the son. So who must be honored in that house? It should be the son. And we said this even when we studied about the church being the body of Christ, we said that Christ is the head. So he deserves the honor. He deserves the glory. And now that we're talking about the church being the family of God, once again, the focus is on Christ. Christ is the faithful son over his house. And, uh, you know, there are other scriptures also that say that, you know, the uh, we don't just give the home, the house, the uh, built house, it's due praise and uh, glory and leave it at that. But you know, we would always ask the question, who built this house? Who, who is the owner of the house? You know, who is the one uh, who is behind this house? And when we ask that question uh, for God's church, the answer is the Lord Jesus. You know, he is the son in the house and the glory should always be due to him. So when we consider the local church, you know, again, we've talked about this earlier you know, my church your church my kingdom your kingdom but this is the lord's church and uh, this is the lord's kingdom so his name must be glorified in his house and he is the householder he is the main person he is the leader okay of the family and uh, we must remember that okay so now that we've understood that as god's people you know, there's also this picture of the local church, which is of a family, there are certain implications. Uh, so in a family, uh, there, there can be, you know, a way of doing things. Uh, every family has, uh, 
you, a certain they have uh, every family has certain standards they have their own boundaries you know, they have their uh, schedule so they have a way of doing things in a family uh, now if we were to visit uh, another family maybe a family of a friend or uh, a relative we would find no matter how uh, how close we are and how common our practices are there'll be something different about you know that other family so there's a way of conducting ourselves when we go to that other person's house now in the same way when we consider the house of god you know paul wrote to timothy and said that when you conduct yourself in the house of god you know you, you need to know how to do it what are the standards by which you must conduct yourself in this family so there is that implication because we're calling uh, god's people a family there is a way of doing life in that family which we must recognize okay now uh based on this based on this there are a, a couple of other thoughts that we would uh, you know bring in so here there is a passage uh, given from a uh, second thessalonians 3 verses 6 through 16 where uh, we talk about natural and spiritual boundaries in a family uh, you know there there are certain boundaries which we cannot trespass so having that keeping that in mind when you talk about the the uh, spiritual family which is the local church in this passage you know um, uh, paul writes and he says that you know we mustn't walk in a disorderly manner uh, we must we must work hard okay we must not eat the bread of uh, uh, laziness and things like that so basically he says that uh, because we belong to the family of god we mustn't have the understanding that you know everything goes in the natural like when you look at the local church you know you have um, you you will have people from different walks of life you will have people from uh, you know people who are are um, well to do not so well to do people who have all the things that they need and some others who are in need so we'll have all kinds of people in the church now in our interactions with the people you know, things have to be done in a right way so paul talks about how we mustn't take advantage of the people who attend church or who are part of a local church so uh, the boundaries that are described here is you know if, if we were to say that uh, okay i am part of the local church and this is a family so technically you know uh, a, a certain person uh, would be my brother and uh, you know a lady she would be my sister and because we have this relationship of brother and sister uh, is it okay for me to say that okay you know i i'm just coming over to your place and i'm going to stay with you fr from today onwards because i am uh, you know technically your family okay and then uh, other things like okay i have claim over the things that you own because i'm your brother i'm your sister so things like you know doing things like this is disorderly and that's what uh, paul is addressing in this passage uh, from second uh, thessalonians and he's saying that in the household of god you know though we call ourselves the household there is a way of doing things there is a way of honoring one another there is a way of you know living uh, together with one another okay so we must uh, understand what scriptures have to say about uh, us being the spiritual uh, family but how to conduct ourselves okay uh, in the natural all right now that was the first thing we talked about you know some boundaries now coming to the second implication of us being a family uh, every family has a culture uh, uh, it has values it could have a purpose and it could also have dreams now based on the head of the household generally you know certain uh, all of these things are defined so uh, for example, uh, you know, values could be like, uh, yeah, respect, uh, kindness. These are all values that the the main person of the house insists that okay, these are the values by which we are going to live. And the family could could have a, uh, a it could have a purpose. 
uh, family could say something like okay uh, we will we will uh, do whatever we need to do but at the same time you know god has called us to bless others so uh, you know our family will be one that will give to others so they are constantly looking for ways to uh, give into the lives of uh, people that they know who are in need so they they have certain purposes you know, that they have listed out and they want to move in that direction uh, and the family could have some dreams like okay we want we want to live uh, in in a particular place after so many years and you know we want to uh, have a farm and different dreams that a family could have so in the same way when we talk about the family of god uh, we can define even the spiritual family by the culture values purposes and dreams of that household now this can apply to a local church now obviously when we say the large family of god which is you know the the body of christ at uh, the body of christ at large it's hard to define a culture values purposes and dreams specifically so if you take a local church here uh, the example of apc is given how uh, uh, under these under these heads uh, we we've, we've put down a couple of things which will remain uh, for the church while it is small while it is growing while it hits the goals that god has given in terms of numbers uh, and all of that so these these things remain so what is the culture that uh, apc has uh, uh, put in or apc uh, has uh, uh, adapted it's a casual contemporary and creative culture okay so by that uh, what what we mean is that it's okay to i am just saying uh, it in a simple way maybe a church service right we are attending a church service and it's okay to maybe dress uh, uh, casual okay you don't really have to come with your suit and your uh, you know formal attire it's okay to to be casual uh, it's okay to be contemporary it's okay uh, to be creative so just you know one one example there but this can apply to you know, so many uh, other things that we do as a church family as a local church so casual contemporary creative and the culture is also that everyone is a minister um, and that's just how the uh, church should function so these things have been put in place uh, even before you know church started um, gathering together so uh, you know pastor obviously has listed out these things and it remains as, as the fabric on which the church is built and it continues to grow uh, so here we have a volunteering culture you know, every other person is serving in something or the other so everyone is a minister it's word based spirit led okay that's the culture of the church it's spiritual yet practical uh, it's active energetic dynamic so that's the culture that this local church has uh, adapted the values on which the church is based integrity excellence uh, staying on the leading edge of what god is doing opportunity for everyone unity and cohesiveness relationships okay so once uh, the all these things are defined it's easy for anyone who joins maybe a new person also they'll know how to actually do life in this community so i'm uh, reading out whatever is has been already listed here our purpose glorify and exalt the name of jesus uh, and then you know there's an explanation the apc is not the work of a man denomination or an organization but it is the work of the lord by his spirit through his people and other purposes here to make an impact and then uh, you know to equip every believer so uh, almost every activity that the church engages in will try to uh, address these these purposes then the dream of the church has been listed here to raise up five strong locations five strong churches each over 50000 people in bangalore with each church having a powerful impact on all strata of society then raise up several churches across this nation in cities towns and villages gathering many thousands into god's kingdom and discipling them then go into other nations impacting various regions of the world with the gospel by raising up churches bible colleges and making a difference in the lives of people for the kingdom of god now when we look at 
these dreams uh, maybe everything has not yet been achieved but we know that all all the ministry ties in to these dreams so this is what has been set in place for the family of god the local church of apc to follow now this is uh, th again this is this is applicable to one local church but i'm sure every local church you know god gives specifics on the uh, purposes specifics on the dreams so any one of us you know if we are, if we have been called for church ministry and god really wants you to found or plant a church this is one of the first thing that you can do to sit down and write out all of these things because uh, this will again you know become the foundation on which the family will grow so as a as yes christ is the householder he is the leader but the senior pastor is in charge of steering things uh, in a particular direction so when we put these things down for the family the family of god will uh, adapt the same culture and move forward okay so yeah uh, i think three things there which we have seen uh, i counted the boundaries but i didn't count the boundaries part uh, but yeah even that is that is part of the three that should have been counted so one we discussed uh, as an implication of being a local church family is to learn how to conduct ourselves second is to maintain boundaries uh, with, and understand the natural and spiritual third one is to have our culture values purposes and dreams well defined okay and that helps us uh live as a uh, you know a family with minimum difficulties and problems okay now uh three important practices in a local church so we will we will discuss about this now what are these practices similar to what we see in a normal family there can be practices like uh, on the weekends uh, the family goes uh, the family engages in some form of recreation sports uh, or they might have practices like uh, having a meal together every day maybe dinner time uh, the family comes together they eat together or you have uh, a time of devotion together in the evenings something you know some practice uh, which is part of your everyday life and in the same way when we talk about the local church there are some practices you know that we must uh, definitely have because scripture recommends this one is to walk in brotherly love because we we are uh, children of god we are brothers and sisters sons and daughters uh, of the king you know in our interaction with one another we are encouraged to walk with brotherly love so here there's a passage in the notes of our thessalonians 4 verses 9 and 10 it says but concerning brotherly love uh, you you have no need that i should write to you for you yourselves are taught by god to love one another and indeed you do so toward all the brethren who are in all macedonia but we urge you brethren that you increase more and more so uh, when we look at the local church okay uh, it's not a place where we come only to get what we want yes we worship together we we get the word of god we experience the presence of god so we are spiritually receiving a lot from the uh, house of god but at the same time you know there are others that god has planted in that local church who are our family so how do we interact with these people there must be brotherly love binding the people of god together so that's a practice which we must have without brotherly love it's it's hard to uh, uh, do life it's and in fact it's very easy to uh, hold on to offenses of people and uh, uh, you know have bitterness in our hearts unforgiveness in our hearts for uh, others who may be a, the part may be a part of the church but when we have brotherly love you know we will know how to walk in the right manner the bible has so much to say about it um things like uh, you must give preference to one another things like um you know you must do good to those who are in the household of faith uh, things like we must support you know brotherly love means to support those who are weak and those who have fallen 
okay uh, to definitely serve and uh, see that the people who have fallen are restored so all of this all these actions are part of brotherly love and uh, if we can incorporate these things, obviously, you know, doing life as a local church family will be so meaningful and so enriching. So brotherly love must be a practice in any local church. Then the other practice here is to keep the unity and fellowship of the spirit. And Paul writes about this. He writes about this to the Ephesian church. And in fact, that word endeavoring there uh, from the greek word when we we see the meaning of the greek word uh, it, it is uh, spoudazo okay pronunciation obviously it's greek to me so uh, that's the reason i kind of avoid sometimes saying the words but the meaning of the word is to use speed so uh, that means to be proactive to be proactive in keeping the unity uh, else it's easy for us to come up with uh, or pinpoint differences to uh, cause divisions to create strife in the local church community because it i mean it, it's the easiest thing to do isn't it every there's a lot of difference between any two individuals however when we are part of the family of god here is here is what needs to be taught to the believers to keep the unity and fellowship of the spirit and paul says here you know in a speedy way or proactively meaning it's like we don't want divisions so we're kind of uh, you know very very careful and cautious not to give place to anything that will bring about a division so endeavoring to keep the unity if that is uh, the attitude with which people are part of the family of god uh, you know, we we will we will see God work powerfully because where there is unity, we know that God commands a blessing. So we must make every effort to maintain unity, to maintain oneness and togetherness, not uh, with our own mind and you know, not not for our own sakes, but by the Spirit, you know, by the Holy Spirit, uh, and this will strengthen our bond together as a family of God. So we have to maintain the bond of peace. Uh, and obviously, even Jesus said this, you know, no house which is divided can stand. If a house is divided, sooner or later, it will fall. So what are the things that may uh, cause the house to fall? Things that the, the works of the flesh, you know, people engaging in um, gossip, people engaging in you know, maybe complaining, grumbling, murmuring. And before you know it, there's a lot of uh, ill feeling in the community. Okay. And, uh, and in fact, you know, things like this, it spreads like wildfire. It may just start off through one person, but if the leadership is not careful to promote unity uh, and also to check this whatever you know gossip or strife or murmuring that has started out it will spread very fast very quickly and it becomes part of the culture of the church and we've seen this earlier also that a leader should also set the standard now, if the leader is uh, himself or herself complaining grumbling pinpointing then everyone in the church will will take to that and follow uh, that same example so we must make sure that we are promoting the right culture, teach what the word of God says, uh, and also create that environment where people can practice uh, that oneness and unity. So we must make every effort to maintain uh, unity. And uh, when it comes to the works of the flesh, identify it quickly and keep it in check. Okay, that's how the church can grow, the family can grow. So that's the second second thing that we have discussed about practices in the family of God. The third practice that we can have in the family is that everyone contributes or everyone serves in one way or the other. Because we know that God has called uh, every single believer God has bestowed or God has blessed every believer with gifts and graces. So uh, similar to a normal household, 
okay maybe the little children in the household they are not given any responsibility you know they can enjoy all the privileges and live in their own bubble thinking hey this is how life is going to be right mom and dad will do all the work and we don't know where the money comes from where the food comes from but we enjoy uh, you know our, our uh, lives and we enjoy our time with family and then as they grow up and the parents start giving them something to do you know some small task like you know keep the books properly or uh, why don't you uh, clear the table and they uh, they like shocked what are you saying Uh, other things that i need to do but every family right uh, has some or the other responsibility given to all the members so each person serves each person contributes and in a family one of the practices that a uh, scripture encourages us is for us to take on our responsibilities okay in galatians 2 Uh, Galatians six verses two to five. Uh, there, Paul writes. You know, he says that each one shall bear his own load. So, uh, again, if you look it up in the Greek, there, bear his own load refers to task and service. So, God has called everyone for a role. to play in the church and it's a fulfilling role it's not to be looked at as oh man you know everyone has to do some work it's not that when god has positioned us put us in a family it's fulfilling for us to uh, do what god has called us to do isn't it like uh, parents would testify to that you, know, you really enjoy taking care of your children or you know uh, other things whatever we are doing for the family it's actually uh, a very rewarding exercise because you love your household you love your family and in that way the task or the service which has been given to each believer even as we do that we are we are fulfilled we are strengthened we are enriched you no know, we become stronger we are we are moving in the purposes of god so each person has to take on their own task their own service and contribute but at the same time you know that that passage that i refer to in galatians 6 also says bear one another's burdens so uh, apart from doing our part you know what we are responsible for there can be circumstances and situations where others need our help Okay, this could have to do with challenges that people face in life it could do with struggles okay difficulties that people are going through uh, and as the family of god you know we step in we also carry one another's burdens now that doesn't mean that we let go of our responsibility no whatever we are called to do we do that in addition to that so when people are in need in the family uh, one of the practices is to step in and to be there for them to help them uh, and to carry their burdens so these are all practices uh, and there can be many others that we can talk about you know when it comes to doing life in a in the right way in the house of god but you know three main things have been enlisted for us uh, in this section one thing that we said is to practice brotherly love uh, second thing is to maintain unity and fellowship of the spirit third thing is for us to all serve to you know, take on our tasks and serve now when we do this you know, like a normal physical natural family the church uh, can also have a pattern a rhythm and the church keeps growing uh, and the church continues you know, in a strong way okay so this is how the family of god is uh, is meant to grow and uh, the leaders the elders have to uh, set the pace for the family to function in this manner all right so we will continue to talk about the church the local church being the family and other things uh, you know that that will come into the picture now in any given family we know that there are people of different ages uh, and when apostle john you know he he is writing his epistle uh, he addresses members in the family um, as fathers you know, he addresses some people as fathers he addresses some others as young men and then he addresses you know uh, the remaining in the community as children so that's the normal the, that's the normal uh, 
age pattern for a given family you know you usually have the mature ones and then you have some who are growing up and then you have the little children so even in the local church there are people in different stages of spiritual growth okay so we will talk about each of these stages okay so okay there is a question already uh, Yes, Samuel. Yeah, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. So before we no go, go to yeah. the stage, yeah, uh, yeah. coming back to, uh, you know, value cultures, even, uh, you know, unity and brotherhood. So I'm, I'm just, mm. so I think that two questions. One is yeah. um, handling differences. Like, so I understand, mm. uh, you know, uh, everybody being on the same page. Um, and you know uh, the place for gossips, grumbling, murmuring. So that that definitely. I agree. But let's mm. say um, it's it's not that, but it's um, say I'm a member of uh, APC, but somehow uh, because of something I've read or 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 my own understanding, I am convinced of something which is uh, like, let's say um, speaking in tongues. Mm. Let's say I'm, I'm I'm somehow convinced that you know it ceased. Mm. Even though I've, you know, I've attended the Holy Spirit lecture and everything, yeah, but yeah. through my own personal thing, I'm convinced. Or, or maybe even um, uh, like other, like you know, like maybe rapture or mm. so like these, the big pair, the whole world st stands. Divided. Okay. So huh. something like that. But I'm still a member. I, I don't want to leave the church because of, uh, you know, because I've accepted this. My family, I've been serving in the church safe for quite a long time. I have my friends, colleagues, everyone here. But there are one or two things uh, that, um, you know, I seem to have a difference in opinion. Mm. Um, so that, how do, how do you, like where in the unity thing that comes and how do you deal with that? Like, do you have members who suddenly come up uh, like that? And then how do you process that? So that's something that I was curious mm -hmm. about. Okay, now, Sam. Yeah. So uh, uh, Sam, uh, did I interrupt you? Do you have more to add no, to that? I have one more question, but uh, after you go. Yeah, so uh, I just needed uh, clarification. So you're asking how how do the elders deal with it? Like how does the leadership deal with people yes. who have a difference of opinion? Yes. yes. Okay. 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 So I can uh, talk from APC's, uh, you know, way of doing things. So here we we are okay with difference of opinion, and we have people part of the congregation who have uh, come from various backgrounds. Okay. Uh, so what we do is, uh, or what we believe in is to preach the word. You know, keep preaching the word. Now, now people may may differ on certain doctrines for example you said holy spirit so what we do is we don't force them into our doctrine or what we believe okay uh, and give them time and there are various uh, forums you know if they apply to uh, let's say they join the holy spirit baptism class they will have the option of asking their questions now they may not necessarily be convinced that's okay mm -hmm. but there are there are different you know such opportunities where they can ask their questions or membership class they can ask their question and also what what we've done is we want to be very accessible so uh, the email address you know i think pastor's email address most people have but in addition to that we have like a feedback at ABC, apc so people just write in and even if they are differing in uh, some doctrine, they just write in, okay? And we address that from the biblical point of view, but we don't insist that they have to believe it. So even at uh, my location, I still have some folks, and they've been worshipping with us for a very long time, okay, many mm. years. Uh, mm. And some of them are still not comfortable with Holy Spirit baptism. Mm -hmm. But that's the journey they are making. We can't help mm -hmm. it. Right? You don't see so, that as a threat to uh, unity? No, no. Uh, no, no, no. Difference. See, when it comes to difference in doctrine, mm -hmm. again, you can look at it like concentric circles. The core has to be fine. So, you know, salvation, uh, there's no compromise on that. Trinity, there's no compromise on that. 
right? Uh, like Christology, who do you say Jesus is? Who is the Holy Spirit? These are the core issues. Now, there can be other things uh, which are, I mean, peripheral is not the word, but you know, it's okay. People take their time to make decisions. Now, some don't like it that, you know, you 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 wear uh, some certain kind of clothes. They have a problem with that. So, uh, you know, there are all kinds of issues, doctrinal, cultural, but the point I'm making is we must have opportunity for people to share. Mm -hmm. So as long as you give them that platform, let them voice out their concerns and we can tell them why we are doing it the way we are doing it. But, uh, but then it's up to them. Right. Yeah. So that's how. Um, thank you. Um, the second question uh, also that I had was, um, so while uh, cultivating culture uh, works, like even work ethics, like especially when, when you're speaking of everyone works, mm. I was thinking of, uh, I suddenly went into um, you know, uh, organizational structure, team members, teams, uh, you know, different, um, you know, working with your own strength, like you know, someone is in media, someone is in uh, ushering, all of that. Uh, but I'm I'm also thinking of um, so uh, and I'm looking at uh, what we have here, which are uh, biblical principles. Uh, but I'm also thinking, you know, there are there are um, organizations and uh, and uh, and resources, even trainings available, um, you know, around uh, around uh, creating vision around around mm -hmm. creating work cultures, like, uh, I don't know, uh, you know, the five levels, like, like, the, the, like, I mean, even to mention like Stephen Covey's uh, seven habits of highly effective, like the one, the time matrix and whatnot, like we have. Mm -hmm. So how much of, how much of um, worldly resources, uh, like, uh, do we look up to? I mean, in, I, in my opinion, I think, it's somewhat required, like they, because there are organizations, people who devoted their life to uh, to studying, like what makes a company, like what, or how how do we form, create uh, a, a good working culture? Um, how do we create effective meetings? Uh, what's the best way to design organization? All of that. So, uh, how much of that do we refer to? Uh, mm -hmm. to, to okay. Yes, Samuel. So, uh, Samuel, if uh, you recall, we talked about those three pillars, right? When we are ministering the word, there are three aspects that we must touch upon. One is Christian life. The second one is uh, Christian ministry. And the third one is life skills. So when we are equipping the congregation um, uh, on these three subjects, you know, they, they will be equipped okay they, they will be equipped spiritually in their personal walk and also um, for living their life in the world out there so what you're talking about here it kind of falls in the life skills category you know right. teamwork right. and uh, okay. yeah so uh, and there are a lot of those you know so-called worldly books and worldly theories and recommendations which have a scriptural basis Okay, so those ones, it's fine. Like we, we can talk about it. We can incorporate it uh, if it is beneficial for the, um, uh, for the life of our believers. So, for example, I'm just saying, okay, um, uh, we know that John Maxwell is a leadership uh, yeah. coach. Yeah, mm -hmm. John Maxwell is a leadership coach. And uh, he doesn't necessarily, uh, you know, uh, quote scripture or anything like that. But uh, there are all these principles that he talks about uh, and leadership. yeah leadership yeah. so that is something that it's good like if, if we are leading um, we in fact at APC we had done uh, a leadership conference uh, and in that conference I know there were different subjects that were covered one of which was these principles winning yeah. winning with people so under that the principles uh, a lot of which came from John Maxwell's writings. Uh, and if it helps the people, if it is wisdom, which is not contradictory to God's word, I think it's okay to, to adapt that and teach it. No problem. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. That was very helpful.
okay great thank you so much and uh, yeah and tarun had ha, has added uh, he says for the first question that you asked uh, he's added uh, about differences of opinion he says i think it is similar to the maturity levels can wait for the cessationist to learn <laughs> okay so tarun you're saying cessationism is low maturity i think uh, cessationalists will be upset with yeah, that one, one one day they will experience a gift of the holy spirit and then they learn that yeah it's possible so we oh, just okay. need to wait it's like yeah yeah, yeah i i get what you're coming from so yeah thank you thank you tarun for adding that uh, good questions uh, it's nice that the class is all lively uh, in fact i was concerned these are subjects that like i'm used to doing it in person and uh, it's fun you know with with the class asking a lot of questions and online there are some limitations so i always worry whether you all are okay or you're finding this uh, very uh, boring but uh, it's good to have questions and interaction so thank you uh, thank you for this let's take a oh <laughs> okay christopher has a question uh, can we can we take this question class and then we'll go for a break Are you okay with that? Yes. Yes. Well, actually, okay. Okay. Great. Go for the break, uh, Pastor, and uh, I can I can ask the question after. Okay. No, Christopher. Why don't you ask it? Because if it's in the same line of thought, let's deal with it. Okay. Um, yeah. No, I was just going through the uh, the you know the, the material uh, you know for for this particular section, and um, I um, I mean maybe it is there, but I I didn't I didn't see it there. um which is around you know the 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 cell groups or the life groups as as they call it in nbc um i actually belong to a life group um uh, but i joined you know relatively late and uh, i joined during the covid so unfortunately uh, you know it's it's all online and uh, i think it's you know it's, it's definitely different from uh, uh you know what um, what would be there you know in an in an actual uh, uh a uh, meeting where you know people are face to face but i think that is that is um, also a a means to you know um, create that level of uh, cohesiveness and uh, you know in, uh, in a family kind of uh, environment because our family is also involved in that as in the you know the natural family is also involved i mean participating in that and um, uh, i think the other thing is i uh, i just comes comes to mind you know uh, you know what we had discussed uh, in an earlier class you know where we talked about um, pastor um, uh, you know yongi cho where he is he is you know he has actually um, you know position the the cell groups uh, as an integral part of you know the, you know how how that how his church has actually grown and um, how uh, you know they have been able to maintain a a, a level of uh, you know bonding within a within a cell group and then how it you know sort of um, goes back and you know they sh- they they probably needs to be a kind of a uh, you know a loop uh, uh, around you know the, the 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 main church and and the leadership so i i don't know how uh, how as i said you know i joined the group quite late so i don't know how effective that is uh, in apc but i think uh, i'm not sure if that is you know that, that needs to be mentioned in this in this section because i think it is um, it just brings a lot of you know um, a lot of focus um, in in a smaller gathering and uh, you know it um, it, uh, it just you know builds that uh, that level of uh, you know uh, cohesiveness um, uh, you know within the the overall family of uh, of of uh, the community in, in a church yeah yes yes uh, christopher uh, that's very true uh, there is a mention of it when when we talk about um building community we'll come to that and yes cell groups have a huge part to play in in getting people connected uh, and for them to feel belonged otherwise as you rightly point, pointed out it's very easy for people to get lost okay in a in a large crowd uh, but cell groups are uh, very helpful and we'll talk about it christopher you know when when we talk about building community uh, is that all right yes yeah, sure thank you okay yes thank you thank you thank you uh, okay, at this point let's uh, go for a break it's 956 so we can start off at 1006 and uh, we'll 
meet then thank you everyone